My path from graphic design to fashion was very interesting. It was, uh, it all started as a hobby, making some headpieces for um, a fine art exhibition. And uh, whomever who saw the pieces, they wanted one. And then I was like, oh, that's interesting. I can do that just after hours for like some fun pieces. And then I entered uh, Sydney Carnival uh, and I won the first, first prize for the millinery and then there were people asking for cars, where's your studio? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and then, um, so my friends encouraged me to enter the um, sort of the millinery course. And then from there I entered the um, Melbourne Cup uh, millinery award and I won that. And everyone was like, what studio I need? Who is she? We've never heard of her. And it was just like all straight first year. And uh, so it was all started like that from the top, like um, very uh, intensive. It wasn't very gradual. And then, um, yeah, graphic design was pushed out and it was all millinery. <laughs> well, for me, it stayed as a hobby maybe for three, four months. And then after that, I was all like, had my mindset on uh, establishing a business. It's great to focus on your skills, but you have to stop at some point and you have to sort of, uh, think about how to structure your business, your operation and your sales. So it was like, um, for me, the time that I enjoyed it as a hobby was very short. <laughs> I've been working as a graphic designer, but always had a side project, artistic project going on. And for me, uh, at that moment to learn that, yes, you have to be creative, but then you have to in some sort of way, um, think about how it's going to operate, how it's going to work. It, that mindset changing was really difficult for me, um, but then I got it. <laughs> and that was the biggest part, uh, the biggest uh, transition from a hobby to a business, changing that mindset. The way that I developed that idea in my mind of a new collection is that I obsess about it. I always have some ideas brewing at the back of my mind. Something I see, it can be um, in a theater, it can be in an opera, very, very, it just like something clicks and I just keep it in mind and maybe I think about it four months or something uh, until the time for making the collection comes up. And also the trend is a big part of designing a collection. But for me, I never can jump on the like, train of the trend and just make whatever is out there. No, it has to have the studio and his handwriting all over it. So that's really important for me. So all that idea and then thinking about what's going on in the fashion world at this moment and then uh, like translate, translating it into the studio and his design, that's sort of the, the process of designing a piece. I'm trying to um, push millinery towards more innovative ways and my inspiration for this season looking at traditional Russian crowns and uh, I, I constantly had the concept of a snowflake at the back of my mind and I was trying to bring these two together. It took me a while to jump on, on board. I had a few different offers for uh, joining rental industries but I wasn't sure about it so I had to like I think it's this uh, businesses have been around in the last few years and I had a bit of time to think about it. <laughs> and now I'm thinking about it, I love it. It's just a fantastic concept uh, from like uh, looking at it from the perspective of the fast fashion's impact on the environment and uh, the concept of sharing the clothes that, you know, uh, it's just, that you're gonna wear once and you wanna look fabulous one day, one night on that event. So I just thinking about it, I love it more and more. Um, and I think Glam Corner, they're just doing it right. <laughs> Our hashtag is allergic to ordinary and I mean it. <laughs> All the people around us Whoever who picks our headpieces, they say, oh my God, it's different from whatever else we've seen. And that is the people that we are really um, catering for. Our customer, they, they, they don't want to be the one that's wearing whatever it is like everybody else is wearing. Always when I'm designing, I have her in mind that I can't let her down. I can't give her what is out there. So I have to design something further, you know, beyond what is out there for her. My tip for the spring racing is that 
when you're at home, you always think that, oh, it's too much. I don't want to be, you know, over the top. Oh, that might look a bit ridiculous. And then when you turn up to the event, everybody has been like <laughs> done way more than you. And you feel like, oh, I could have wore that, you know? <laughs> so I'm just saying, go way out there and just like, be the best version of yourself and don't like if it's over the top it's the right one